This morning I posted this video on Twitter, a conversation that happened with the Zulu King and one of the colonizers. And it's a conversation that happened hundreds of years ago, the issue around land. Um, I think King Shaka foresaw how we could end up in this mess today. We have to go back just to make sure that we get history right. So I recall guests like we have today who spent probably 40% of her lifetime, or if not a third, just putting this great work together. My guest, Ms. Shalom Bata, is in the building, and she's going to help me get it right. You know, um, anything to do with the Zulu and what they've achieved in their lifetime, especially Zulu kings, I drop everything. That's why I was here on the double. I'm trying to structure this conversation in a way that I, I, I don't get out of line, but at the same time, truth must be told. When you look at how our history has been distorted mm -hmm. for whatever reasons, now that we're here and we've got this book, the endorsement of the king does it give it? A, does it give true account that it's it is as pure as milk? This you, you is cannot... the auto authorized mm. history book of the Zulu. It's never been done before, before apartheid and after apartheid. Listen to me, eight hundred years back, I only stopped going back when everybody started quoting one another, and it was not written down anymore. In my book, I've got about twelve pages. Of referencing. So I didn't suck it up. I did not think it up. It's all Some of there. us can't even write two pages of our bio. You got 12 pages of reference. And um, it was verified five times. It's history, remember? Right. So it's not what I think. My voice is not in there. I'm just telling a story. In fact, I'm telling a very long story. So sure. every fact has been checked in there. And history cannot start in 1652. That is true. The first yes. people to crash land recorded is 1497. Wait, 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 wait. You want to take us back to school because we thought Jan van Riebeck no, was the first... No, he was a thief. And he was actually sent to South Africa as in exile. He had stolen money from his company. So he was just meant to hasn't just go to jail, just start a, a little company there just to get... A uh, voyage of some sort. He, he, he actually was banished. The first time the white guy who recorded meeting King Shark, he found him seated with people from Mozambique, with mm. traders from Mozambique. King Shaka was trading? Yeah with, yeah, with people from Mozambique. Got you. The, yeah, there were some Portuguese Got and you. locals. Wow. Okay. okay. Well, so King King Shaka already, they were trading with people on the coast. Yes. King Shaka's major, the Zulu Wars, the one, the one major war was Isandran in 1879. The Isandran war, it was not over land. It was a religious war. Yeah. Because one of the wives of one of the top guys there, you know, one of the Amakos, who say hi, you know, converted to Christianity underground and didn't tell the husband. And he's like, but you know, Wazulu said there's order. You can't just so much join another religion without talking to me. Yeah. So but these women are like, See, now we're going to pray. So then they get them across, you know, across the river. They ran to Ebalungwini, then they brought them back and killed them. That was the law of the land. Yes. Then the British in, in Durban, they said, no, actually, just because those people wanted to be Christians or they were Christians, you have killed, you know, they are part of us. So the war broke out. It was based on those women converting to Christianity. Oh. But it's all, they'll never tell you the truth. So it was a religious war. The Zulu fought for nine months, non-stop. And once more, they defeated the British, hands down. And those tactics they used were taught by King Shaka, you know, the pincer movement yes, yes. of the head, the chest, Amathombe, and the horns. Mm -hmm. That was King Shaka's blueprint. That was the formation, the, the, C, formation. the C formation. They were untouchable. They are female regiments. Led in war with female regiments and female generals. Nobody knows about them. Ooh, the one time president, I mean, prime minister of England, yeah. ooh, pre prime minister Disraeli. Yeah. Famously in parliament, he said, who are these people? Who are these remarkable people who defeat my generals and put an end to one of Europe's longest dynasties? Yeah. They killed the, the, the last surviving French prince. And in the, during the war. What? Uh-huh. <laughs> killed by who? The Zulu. In 1879, during the San Lona War, let's take in you know, a battle. The, the Zulus couldn't have ever lost that battle. Is that the Blood River? Yes. Yeah. Why is it Blood River? It never became blood. Just very a quick one. When a river is flooded, they all agree, even the white historians agree, the river was flooded. Okay. How does a river get flooded and get red if there's blood in it? It's not stagnant. Okay, they say the Zulus, remember they swam, hang it. Yeah. They were standing this side, they shot at them. The Zulus were swimming to come this side, hang it. Right. So, but in effect, what they're saying is that the Zulu held this huge shield and igwa, the spear, right. and they swam in one hand. Am I making sense to you? Mm. Think about it. How, since when do you swim with one hand? Those things, when they get wet, they're very heavy. There was a donga and then there was a river. So, the, the Africaners were sitting inside this donga and they'd made a lager. 
and they hid inside. There were only 500 of them, okay? Mm -hmm. General Ndlela came all the way from Nobamba. He came with his regiments, about four or five regiments, okay? okay. And they saw them. He says, I'm, I'm not going to pick a fight with 500 men. And he said, let them go. You, you hear me? And he sent a small force to go and deal with them. But when the Africaners told the story, because their history is always written by the winner, they said they killed thousands of Zulus. So and did it, the war materialize? The war, the war took place, yeah. but the Africaners were beaten. So much that they used to call this day Dingan's Day, because he showed them flames. <laughs> Every year, this side of the river, the Zulus celebrate on the 15th of December. It's a spectacle to be seen. The Zulus sit this side and, and celebrate. Yeah. The other side of the river, the Africaners say we defeated them. Same day, there's less than a kilometer in between. Guess what? This government, in all fairness, they build a bridge. <laughs> they said, let's build a bridge. Shame, let us get together. And nobody wants to cross that river. Do we still even have Dingan's Day? Yes, it's now called Day of Reconciliation. Ay, yeah, yeah. Yeah? We first take March 21st, mm -hmm. call it Human Rights Day. 60 people died when, in yeah, Shabville. Yeah, when they cut us down. Human Rights Day. Then we allow our Heritage Day. Bride Day. It's King Shaka's Day. He died on that day. It's always been a King Shaka Day. They changed it. Must forget about our history. I need uh, June 16. Why is the youth day? We were shot. I was young. I was there. We think they killed us. Why are we calling it youth? So people must forget about Soweto. Because Soweto turned the history of this country around. And that history, speaking of which, part of the uh, our formation was all conceptualized at your parents' house. Uh, you Absolutely. Never, you never spoke about where you're from. Go at Dube, your parents' <laughs> house. All presidents slept at your parents' uh -huh. house. When June 16 was conceptualized, it was my you know, living room. Kai. What, what is important? You do not start a struggle and let it go. First, we've left a lot of soldiers out there. People mm. who left like us, we were young, we didn't know where we were going, but we just knew apart it was no deal for us. We need to do something about it, okay? We have got a glorious history. Yeah. And by the way, this is not just a Zulu thing. Under King Kachuayo, in King, King Kachuayo's time, yes. he formed, because now after they dealt with the Bure on the, on the coast, they started with Kukune, right, in the right. north. They formed a petty Zulu force. Wow. And both of them, they started fighting Nama, Namapun. Zulu people, how did they receive this work? Oh, I mean, man. They said, we are embarrassed. Wow. We have fed checked you, we are embarrassed. We should have done this. Hmm. Look at you, and you're from the township, Nohal. But guess the, the, you know, the people who buy my book is young Zulu males. How do we get access to it? You can email me. Okay. Uzulu.uzulu.gmail.com or okay. Instagram, Uzulu yep. underscore umlando. Yep. Twitter at Uzulu underscore umland. Is there a number? direct number? number yeah. yeah. 082 sure. 398 9924. And also Facebook as well. Uzulu. We're now faced with the challenge to <laughs> make sure that this becomes part of our curriculum and for not just Zulu people. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the significance of um, King Yabasoto. Mm. Uh, there's yes. also some missing pieces. Yes. Mantatis, Queen Mantatis, she was a warrior of note. She was little like this, like five foot. But boy, she led 40,000 men in, in war. Uh, Queen Labutzibin in Swaziland. She had such a temper that if it didn't rain, they'll say Queen Labutzibin is she's not angry today. Even the rain is scared of her. Where do we go from here? We need to tell our own stories in our own languages. And also in English. Yeah. So if we Are we going to get the English version? Because this is in Zulu. Yes, that's in Zulu. It was amazing. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, the English is in the bag. Mambata, thank you for joining us. And uh, I feel that, you know, we got to do a series of these conversations. And you did say, for those who want to book you, probably to tell more stories about who they are, mm -hmm. do you do like private, I mean, public mm -hmm. speaking? Yes, yes. Yeah. even private. Yeah. I do, yeah. So it's, in, it's, it's the Uzulu dot Uzulu at gmail.com gmail mm. thank you so they much they can call you yeah I'm here so. what a great journey I, I see my camera crew in here is listening more than doing the filming <laughs> let's get busy boys let's, let's get do busy. it thank you for joining us in studio it's a pleasure thank um, you so much for having me